I also think that how we're trained as computer scientists has to change so that there's a sense of responsibility. We had a, a doctor up here earlier who was very courageous and, and standing up for Flint saying, we take an oath. We don't do that as computer scientists. We think we can uh, create the world, we can break things, and until it's actually confronted, we don't actually have to make any changes. Joy. <laughs> Latanya. Darren. What a joyous occasion this is. We know that, for example, one of the reasons I've come to know you is because at the Ford Foundation, we have been working on this new field of public interest technology. Yeah. Because just as there needed to be a field created of public interest law in the 1960s, we need to think about what the public interest is in this new digital world. And in fact, it's the private sector who has determined the bounds of what is public and private. And we saw in the Zuckerberg hearings mm where we witnessed the, I think, the interaction of capitalism and democracy, and democracy lost. Yeah. Because there was no one sitting behind those Congress people, yep. passing them notes, giving them questions to interrogate the tech executives because most of the capacity in this space is in the private sector. Yeah. And so one of the things we have to think about is how do we train a generation of public interest technologists like yourselves mm -hmm. who are gonna fight the fight for justice yeah. in this new digital world. So Joy, from your standpoint, What's needed most at this time to protect the public interest? It's a big question and it's not just one thing. I still believe that as we're talking about public interest technologists and as we're thinking about how computer scientists, how policy makers can shape the future, we have to also remind ourselves the importance of the artist and the storytellers. So the work that I've done thus far, I really believe that part of the reason it's gained attention is because of that visual of coding in a white mask. There were FBI experts who did a facial analysis tests before, but they didn't take the approach of calling out. I also think that how we're trained as computer scientists has to change so that there's a sense of responsibility. We had a, a doctor up here earlier who was very courageous and, and standing up for Flint saying, we take an oath. We don't do that as computer scientists. We think we can uh, create the world, we can break things, and until it's actually confronted, we don't actually have to make any changes. And so I think changing how we learn to be computer scientists will be a huge part of it, but not thinking that computer scientists or technologists can solve it alone. So you see the role of the art and humanities? I mean, so do you see a new curricular being needed, President Bacow, here <laughs> and in other places? Absolutely, and I'd like to talk about how, let's say, looking at the social sciences influenced my own work. So with Gender Shades, we went through, we made a new data set, et cetera, and so forth. And what we were able to show is that the current way we're taught thinking about the curriculum is to look at data and information in aggregate. And so if you see the aggregate performance for some of these companies, it seemed okay. So then we said, let's break it down and let's look at what the implications are for gender and we see gaps. Let's look at what the implications are for skin type and we see gaps. But what I was able to do was then bring in Kimberly Crenshaw and say there's something we can learn as computer scientists from what she did with anti-discrimination law, saying that single axis analysis is not enough. And so what happens when you marry that with computer vision? Well, this is what we got. We provided a new kind of perspective of looking at the data. And here we see that 
for one group, the pale males, you have 100% performance. And then for another group, women of color, right, you have the worst performance. And when we disaggregate that, we got to error rates as high as 47%. So as a computer scientist sitting in my body, as somebody who's also reading Crenshaw, I'm able to then provide new insights into what we're doing with computer vision and computer science. But Everyone turn on your facial facial recognition block. We're here to make a planet. Can't nobody stop. Everyone turn on your facial facial recognition block. We're here to make a planet. Can't nobody stop.